but we got week one 107 days away. Can you believe that we are? It feels like we're just around the corner. I know 107 days feels like a lot. It's going to be here before you know it. So we got to just take a quick peek at some of these games. I got four that I'm keeping a particularly close eye on. I want to get this out in the open, though. Week one, we're not defining any of these teams. Week one is not for making conclusions on any of these teams. We are trying to learn about them. We're going to observe, take some notes, jot them down, and understand that how you look week one may look very different than how you look in week 12. Okay, remember Florida last year when they welcomed Utah to the swamp. And we were all saying after that game, after AR just put on a clinic, hey, is he going to win the Heisman Trophy? Is Florida a real threat in the SEC? Anthony Richardson ended up doing great things, was inconsistent. But what I'm saying is what we thought Florida was that game ended up being different than what they were to end this season. Now for Florida, it's a new season. It's a, it's a new era. Billy Napier going into year two. I guess it's the second year of the new era. Utah is going to play host in this one. This one is going to be on Thursday night, and that's where I want to start. Florida going to Utah. And for me, this game is just like what I said at the very beginning of this segment. This is for learning. This is a, a very big game where we're going to observe a lot of things. And about Utah, yes, but I think even more so about Florida. Because for Utah, we have a decent feel for who they are. It feels like the majority of Kyle Whittingham coach teams are relatively of the same makeup. They're going to be tough. They're going to be physical. Cam rising. You hope he's able to get healthy sooner rather than later. But we have a good feel for Utah. Even if they look a certain way in week one, I'm not pressing the panic button because I know who they are under Kyle Whittingham. Now for Florida, that's where I really want to settle in right now. We're going to get a good temp for Florida. We're going to get a good chance to look under the hood and see what they're made of. Because, again, they go to Utah. It's going to be on a Thursday. It's not on a typical Saturday. Going to have a lot of people watching this game. I don't expect Florida to be perfect. Whether it's Jack Miller or Graham Mertz, and for the record, I expect it to be Graham Mertz playing quarterback for them. It won't be perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but how far off the mark are we from perfect? Because it's one thing to go out in game one and look sloppy and look like you have a couple of things to clean up. It's a whole other thing to go out there in week one and be like, oh boy, we got some issues. We got to really tinker with this starting lineup. We got to tinker with this depth chart. We got to have some guys coming to their own as we go on throughout the season. So for Florida, I'm just curious to see what they look like. And like I said, how far off are they from what we need them to be to make a bowl game? Because Vegas has got them at five and a half. We did not give that out as a best bet either way, quite frankly, because we don't know what Florida's going to be. But this game should give us a very good litmus test for where they're going to be going forward. Shout out to all y'all watching live. Gosh, dang it. Freaking love you guys. Make sure you're subscribed right now. And make sure you are also following me on Twitter and Instagram, at Judy Piquel. Also, shout out to everybody on podcast. We appreciate and love y'all too. Finding time. Another game now. Let's move on to the Saturday slate. We got Fox, big noon kickoff. We got Colorado going to TCU. You'll have Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson on the call. And for me, I'm just looking to, looking to, uh, to see what these new pieces look like for both sides of the ball now. A lot of new pieces, or uh, both sides of this stadium, rather. Uh, a lot of new pieces for Colorado. We'll talk about in a second. But TCU, man, I mean, Max Duggan gone to the league. Quinton Johnston gone to the league. Garrett Riley gone to Clemson. What do they look like offensively? Because that was their calling card last year. TCU scored right around 39 points a game last year. How much do they have to reset? We're not making a statement on TCU in this game, but I'm just curious to see how different they look from a year ago. Now, Colorado, that's, that's the, the place we really got to focus here. Because Coach Prime, it'll be his first game as the head coach in Boulder, and they're taking their, their show on the road, and I... There's so much made about all the transfers they've gotten, and I think it'll take some time for it to mesh. Nobody's disagreeing there. I'm just curious to see some of these key pieces, some of these guys that we expect to be ballers for Colorado in 2023. I'm looking at Shadour Sanders. I'm looking at Travis Hunter. I have no reservations about their ability. Have complete confidence both those dudes can ball. Shadour Sanders, ball was jumping out of his hand in the spring game. Travis Hunter is a freak of nature on both sides of the ball. But keep in mind now, we haven't seen either of these dudes appear in an FBS game. I have nothing negative to say about F FCS football. But you and I both understand, this is a different level of football now. I'm not making a prediction on what they will or won't do, but this will be a very good litmus test for us to see, okay, how much of a learning curve is there going to be for them at this FBS level of football? 
Game's faster. Guys are bigger. Windows close quicker. Receivers are faster to cover if you're Travis Hunter. So I'm just curious to see. This will be a great spotlight for that team. They've been the story of the offseason with how much work they've done through the portal. Because the other thing I want to look at for Colorado is how are they gelling? I mean, you overturn the entire roster. I get on radio and talk to people and we talk about, hey, what's Colorado going to look like? And I just said this to somebody the other day. If anybody tells you that they know for a fact that Colorado in their first year under Coach Prime is either going to 100% succeed or 100% fail, they're lying to you. They're lying through their teeth. I don't think they're doing it intentionally, but there's nothing that we can compare Colorado to from previous years. There's nothing. I mean, even last year, they won one game. Whole roster's pretty much gone. Whole staff's pretty much gone. You have no data point on Colorado and this roster, not just within this operation, not just within this program under Coach Prime, but within college football history. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Curious to see how they gel early on and got a lot to watch in that game. I'm very excited that one. That one's at noon. It's at noon. You still have a lot of games ahead of you. Now, for North Carolina and South Carolina, in Charlotte, neutral site game, this is going to be, I think, one of the sneakier games of the day. I have labeled this one the who comes back to earth bull. Because both sides of this now, there's a lot of optimism, a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement, and for good reason. If you're North Carolina, Drake May, if you're residing in Chapel Hill, you feel like he's the best quarterback in college football. Now, Caleb Williams is probably up for that discussion as well and probably the way that I would lean. But if, if, you're, if you're standing Drake May there, if that's your guy, you can make a real argument. And that's one of the reasons why the good people in Chapel Hill are extremely fired up for 2023. They got big dreams. They got big aspirations. Played for an ACC title last year. Didn't go how you wanted it to. But still, you got your quarterback coming back who you feel extremely confident about. So that hype train that's painted Tar Heel blue has his face and his number all over it, and for good reason. So that's North Carolina side of things. For South Carolina, Spencer Rattler said, I'm not leaving. Juice Wells said, I'm not leaving. The culture there, I've talked about it here at nauseum. You know I'm a fan of Shane Beamer. I told you I got one year of eligibility. I'm running down on kickoff for Coach Beamer. That's what I would do right now. Even so, Vegas has got him at six and a half wins. Good people in Columbia are saying, great, we'll hammer that all day long. We feel great about that one. This is going to be year three, though, for Coach Beamer. This is going to be the year where a lot of people say, okay, what are we as a program? Year one and year two, I mean, year two, you didn't have a quarterback. Year one, you're still trying to get your feet under you. Year three now, what are we? So they got high expectations in South Carolina as well. The reason why I call it the who comes back to Earth Bowl, whoever loses this game, you take a real good look in the mirror. And it's only week one. I don't, think e I don't think either side is defined by this game. But this will be a situation where you have to, again, take a look in the mirror and say, okay, maybe we believe some things about ourselves during this offseason that aren't 100% true. Maybe we still have some places where we can improve. And you'll do that after the game anyway. But I think for South Carolina and North Carolina, it'll be a real good chance to sort of steady your, your psyche a little bit. Because you find out who you are after you lose a game especially the first game of the season. Backs you into a corner a little bit, and I think ultimately could be a good thing. Now, the game of the entire weekend is Sunday in Orlando. You got the LSU Tigers and the Florida State Seminoles. This one lived up to expectations in every sense of the phrase. Last year with Florida State blocking a PAT to win the game in walk-off fashion, and this is a playoff game. We've talked about this before on this show. This is, without a doubt, no way around it, this is a playoff football game. Week one, I know, but look at the slate for both these guys. For LSU and Florida State, if you're to drop the first game, you lose your mulligan. You put your fate in somebody else's hands. It's not how you want to live, especially not after week one. So for LSU, they feel like they weren't even in their final form last year. Like it was Brian Kelly's first game as the head coach at LSU, Jane Daniels, his first time suiting up. They didn't feel like they even were who they were as a team yet in week one last year. And Mason Taylor, in a different interview, he's like, yeah, we, we got that one circled. You better believe we got that one circled. We, we got to go and get back what's ours. So that's how LSU feels about it. They did not just sweep this one to the back of their mind and say, oh, ho-hum, whatever, last year happened. No, no, they, they got this one circled, and they feel like they got to get payback. Now for Florida State, 
I don't think you can buy any more Garnet and Gold Kool-Aid anywhere in Tallahassee. I've checked online. I've asked friends in the area. You can't buy any more Kool-Aid in Tallahassee. That's Florida State colors. Because it is out of stock and it is being chugged by the gallon. And for good reason. We'll talk about Keon Coleman here in just a few minutes, but they've got the most returning production in college football. They just extended Mike Norvell. The ACC feels wide open. Like They feel like this is the year. And it all starts week one in Tallahassee. So playoff atmosphere, neutral site. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I'm excited for this one. So keep an eye on those games. So to recap it for us, the peak that we're taking at week one, Florida at Utah on that Thursday. And then you roll into Saturday after you get your Friday out of the way. And there's some other games going on. Then you roll into Saturday and you got yourself big noon. Joel Klatt, Gus Johnson. Colorado at TCU. Our first look at Coach Prime and our first look at TCU since that national title game. Then we roll on. We got North Carolina and South Carolina. Battle for the Carolinas in Charlotte, fittingly enough. Which one of those teams comes back to earth? Drake May, very real case to be the best quarterback in college football. Does he make a statement in that game? Spencer Rattler and company, they're going to have something to say about it. Then we got LSU and Florida State on that Sunday. It's a packed slate. I didn't even talk about Clemson and Duke on Monday. I mean, week one gives you all you want with college football and then some. It's going to be phenomenal. I absolutely cannot wait. 107 days away. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.